Today I'm going to show you how to get yourself the ultimate trading raiding storage or galaxy jump ship in No Man's Sky. This is essentially a ship that has the maximum amount of storage available with optimized technology and layouts in the tech slots. So first of all you'll want the ship itself. You definitely want to go for a hauler. This is primarily as hauler type ships can have up to 42 cargo slots, whereas all other ship types are limited to a maximum of 21. As with all of the ship types, minus Alien of course, the main infantry can be maxed up to 48 slots and the technology up to 21. While any hauler will technically do here, I did think it would be awesome to save ourselves some units and make this a very doable plan for new players and feature a great crashed hauler find. So here we are with this fantastic white winged hauler discovered by Savalin and published by Savalin on the Nomad Sky Quarant Exchange. As the Outlaws update seems to have brought back S-Class crash ships beyond exotics, though it may only be in Outlaw systems, this is indeed an S-Class, meaning you won't need any nanites to upgrade this to its best. The bonus stats on this are not anything super special, but they really don't need to be for this purpose. The damage bonus is 11.6%, which is low for an S-Class hauler, as the max is 20%. The shield bonus is 69%, which is slightly under average, with the maximum being 85% and the hyperdrive is a little above average for an S-Class hauler at 33.6% with the max being 35%. Now to get Savalin's excellent find here, you will need to pop to a portal located in the Euclid Galaxy and dial this address on screen now. An important note here is that before you step through the portal, you must turn off multiplayer. If more than one person is in a multiplayer lobby, only one of those people can get the ship at a time. The others would have to wait some time for their cash to overwrite. Also, if you don't know what portals are or don't have the glyphs, check out this guide. I'll link it just above the timestamps in the description. It will get you all your glyphs super fast. On the other side of the portal, you'll be on the planet in question, so just get in your ship, take off and head to the communications station. If the comm stations aren't visible, then head to the coordinates minus 50.76 by minus 148.64. There you'll find this excellent hauler that you can claim right away. Now I'd advise you get back in your old ship and fly to where you're going to fix this up. If you have lots of resources and maybe some refiners in your freighter, that is likely the best place. So just fly up and summon it and your crash ship will also be available inside. If you want to get it to the station, you can just head to the anomaly and switch to the crash ship there, then teleport to the space station. Alternatively, you can just prepare the required items ahead of time for fully fixing up your ship. This is a full list of the resources you'll need to fix your new hauler entirely. All items on this list can be purchased from space station, galactic trade terminals, and ships that fly into the station except for antimatter, activated copper, and maybe platinum. All but wiring looms can be mined or crafted, though even wiring looms can, if you find the technology, then dismantle it. If you're fixing this on the planet or in your freighter, you'll also need to fix the pulse engine and launch thrusters. So you'll need an extra metal plating, 50 pure ferrite, a dihydrogen jelly and hermetic seal. Now you have your brand new hauler and it's all shiny and fixed up. The next thing to do is to max out its slots. Now if you're doing this purely with units, this is going to get incredibly expensive. I'm talking many billions. However, you can mitigate that in part or entirely by using storage augments. This item can be used to add a slot to a ship's inventory. You can get them from a few different things, but the primary way is through scrapping other ships. Ship scrapping is a great way to make nanites also, which will help just generally in your gameplay. And as luck would have it, this crashed ship is in a pirate system, which as I showed in this video, has 5% chance of any ships that spawn being S-Class. So a great option here is to pop to a trading post in the system, most easily using the economy scanner, then stand on top and just scan all the ships that land. Whenever an S-Class lands, buy it and once you have a full complement of 9 ships, head to the station and scrap them. Just be careful not to scrap the ships you actually want to keep. This will get you storage augments, but to get to the 56 you'll need to max this ship, it could take a while without an exotic first wave spot that drops 3 augments on scrapping. And that is a very rare find. If you are a new player or on a new save, chances are you don't need the full 48 main, 21 tech and 42 cargo right away, so use the huge amount of storage it already has to trade and raid to get the units to buy the ships to scrap or just straight slots. You can also peruse the other crash ship finds on the coordinate exchange and scrap those. Now lastly is the tech. For this I've gone for a single long range weapon, full shields, full hyperdrive and then some augmented extras. First is the Psychotron Ballista. 
This is a pretty great weapon. It does great damage against shields, though low damage winter shields are down. However, during combat using Cyclotron for shields and switching to your unupgraded Photon Cannon, once they're down, not only allows for efficient dispatching of enemies, but also helps to prevent overheating of the weapons. The Cyclotron also has great use for using this ship to raid freighter convoys, as the range of the weapon does affect the distance you can see what is in a cargo pod from. Using the positron ejector in this circumstance is very inconvenient. This layout is also the highest DPS layout for a single inventory setup. Next is the positron ejector. I would suggest this weapon if you don't intend to take down freighter fleets for their goods. Even if you do, you could use a photon cannon to see what is in the pods. The positron is a fantastic and very powerful weapon, even in a 5 slot single inventory setup like this. When deciding the layouts of your positron ejector, you have to decide between two things, more power or more accuracy and range. I personally think that the extra accuracy and range will actually bring you more power overall, due to more shots hitting and greater damage window due to the ship being in range for longer. A note on this is that while some time ago I did confirm that the range on the Fragment Supercharger is increased through adjacency, the accuracy is another thing, and something that is exceptionally difficult to test so I cannot say with 100% accuracy that it gets a buff. Either way, this is an amazing weapon for a single inventory. This is the layout I would recommend. Next big player is the shields. S-class upgrades for shields are always the same value, so any three will do. Just install them and put them into a cube with your ablative armor, as they give each other greater bonuses, then touch any of the S-class upgrades with the main shield module. Shields are important here, as for raiding you'll be largely ignoring enemies, so just tanking any damage. Lastly of the big three is the hyperdrive. Trading requires travel as do many other endeavours. Having a half decent light year range is very useful. For this you don't need to go crazy on the perfect modules, getting over 1000 light years total is easily good enough. Also having the three S-class upgrades will allow you to jump 20 times on a full warp fuel tank. For this layer to be optimum, simply have the three upgrades with the main unit in a cube, with the highest light year range upgrade being in the opposite corner to the main cube, then having the intium drive touching that highest value module. For the other tech, the economy scanner is of course exceptionally useful for trading and raiding, finding out all systems and all economy types and strengths, and even just trading posts within systems. The photon cannon is regrettably indestructible. The system recharger is a great extra to have, as for those times you call it to a planet if you are using it as a storage ship, if you aren't doing short hops in it you'll rarely have to fill it. And lastly is the sublight amplifier for the pulse engine, arguably one of the best technology modules in the game, giving you 30% faster pulse speed. Not only that, but provided you have the main module touching it, as it is here, you will actually travel at 133.9% pulse speed. So a fantastic time saver. And that fine folk is it. You can find all of the videos mentioned linked above the timestamps in the description with the original post on the coordinate exchange by Savalin, as well as an image of the technology layout shown here for easy referencing later. Thank you very kindly for watching. Please do hit the like button and think of something related to the video to comment about for YouTube reasons. Even some dad jokes would be awesome. Have a fantastic day all.